this reality. Tell me what you see when you look at me. Separate yourself from your sanity. Don't turn and walk away. Come and play with me before you put me down. Take a walk with me. I can be so kind. I'll open up your mind. So dance with me tonight. And I know you'll see the Forget him, Ness. You suck under pressure and there's 50 bucks in the line. Shit! <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> there's something funny, buddy? Something funny over there? Yeah, I'll give you sorry, you son of a bitch. Excuse me. There's no excuse for you. You think this is easy? You think you could do better? Tony, give me a dart. We're gonna find out what Mr. Hot Shit Jukebox Filler Guy over here's got. Thinks he can throw. Let's see you do better if you think it's so easy. I don't think I'd honestly miss the entire board, do you? You're not shooting for the entire board. What am I shooting for? Bullseye. <coughs> Bullseye? One shot. You make it, <laughs> you walk your little pansy ass out of here. You miss? You and me, going out back. We're gonna get to know each other a little better. That doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun for me, buddy. How much cash you got there? I'd say 150 bucks. Why? What's in there? Charges fitted. 300 maybe? You wanna put your 150 against my three bills? Huh? For one dart? Bullseye? You're not shit, Why don't you hook these guys up and uh, there's ass comes over there on me. Alright? Got it. Thanks, Thanks Bullseye. Not a problem. No hard feelings, boys. Hey, Ron, who the hell was that? That was Billy Bullseye Jefferson. Going, but we're getting there. Enough for a down payment? I'm buying a bar's expense, but it's going to take some time. Well, we'd have plenty if it weren't for. Yeah. Not here, Charlie. You gotta be kidding me again. No, no, I'll be down. Yeah, thanks for the call. Billy, well, you're not going out again tonight. Karen, I have to. He's my brother. It's always about your brother. It's always about Tommy. When's it going to be our turn, Billy? When do we get to have a life? Come on, Karen. I'm only 27. 
Do you know what happens to guys who don't follow their dreams at 27? They become 40-year-old men who have no idea Karen, what their dreams are. Karen, I don't have before. time for this. Well, if you go, don't expect me to be here. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It means exactly what I said. I'm tired of waiting for time to grow up, Billy. I married you, not him. And the way you take care of him, I feel like you don't even... Karen, I don't have time for this. I have to go. Well, I can't wait for you anymore. <laughs> Courtney Thorne Smith. Oh, hell yeah. Uh-huh. Who? Courtney Thorne Smith. She's that chick from Courtney the Gym. Yeah, she was in uh, Melville's Place uh, with uh, Heather Locklear. Oh, yeah. Man, uh, she's hot as hell. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Your turn. Who you got? Jennifer Love Hewitt. Ooh, ooh, hot as hell. Yep. You're yes. right about that, man. Yes, she is. She does super movies. When I think of her, I have my own party of five. <laughs> 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 Gross. That's great. Are you kidding me, man? <laughs> no. yeah, that's that's not tonight. Renamed Hot Chicks. Renamed what? You can name all the hot chicks you can. They have three names. It's my turn. Joey Lauren Adams. Joey's a guy's name. What are you, gay? No, but she was in Chasing Amy. She was yeah. hot. Yeah. Who you got, Billy? Yeah. I'm a sucker for foreign chicks. I gotta go with Catherine Zeta Jones. Oh, yeah. Good choice. Ben, uh -huh. But guys, I got one. Sally Jesse Raphael. Dude. Nasty. Dude. There's something oh, seriously wrong with you, man. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. What's wrong with her? Hey, Blue Side. Glad you could make it. You want a beer? Sure, Charlie. What's the situation this time? Well, uh, Tommy's been gambling and uh, throwing darts with Mitchell again. Yeah, what's any different? Stakes. He's been losing to Mitchell for two years. So why does he want up the stakes now? You're telling me Tommy up the stakes? Yeah. I don't know by how much, but I know it's quite a bit. Thanks, Charlie. Yeah, no problem. What's going on. Hey, Billy. Yeah. A horse walks in there the other night and orders a beer. Yeah, what's that? Why the long face? Come on, Charlie. It's not original. Hey, Billy, what's up? You want some nachos? I don't know how you eat that crab, guys. And I got an iron stomach. You know this stuff don't phase me. You want some or what? No, thanks. I'm guessing you heard. I'm guessing I heard. Yeah, I heard. Charlie called me. How come you couldn't? I don't know what happened, Billy. I kicked his ass for four games in a row. And then... Then you upped the stakes, right? Yeah, you upped the stakes and he took your ass down. That is the oldest hustle in the book, Tommy. How many times have we seen that in movies? Yeah, like the hustler. They did that in there. I know, guts. You don't need or to the color like of money. They ran a scam in there, too. Paul Newman, Tom Cruise. Man, what a great movie. I know. I've seen it, Guts. A white man can't jump. Guts. I think he gets it. You do get it, don't you? Of course I get it. I screwed up. I didn't get hustled, though. I knew what he was doing, but I thought I could take him anyways. I'm really getting good now, Billy. I thought I had him. Billy, he is really getting good. I think he could even beat you. Charlie said you up the stakes. What'd you lose? Car. You lost your Corvette? Are you a moron? What's wrong with you? Yeah, you thought you had. Get up. I don't have time for a lecture. Come on. Gut, you need a ride? Man, I got a burger coming. Oh, hey, Jefferson. I seem to have an uh, abundance of vehicles. <laughs> Maybe you know someone that wants to buy one. <laughs> oh, I do. Just ask him. <laughs> Loser. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tiffany Amber Thiessen. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I can see Nice. All right, let's get started. For those of you that don't know each other, let's do some quick introductions. I'm Judge Burt from the incredible hockey movie, Mystery Alaska. I'm Stroker Race from the Burt movie with the same name. My name's Bandit, and if you don't know what movie that I'm from, then you're in the wrong room. J.J. McClure, Cannonball Run 1 and 2, not 3. That was a piece of crap. There was no Cannonball Run 3, moron. Right? Was originally renamed it. Speed Zone. That was a piece of crap. 
Hello, down here. Hi, I'm Bert. I'm new, so I don't have a nickname from one of Mr. Reynolds' movies yet, but my dad was such a big fan, he actually named me Bert. Are you serious, kid? You know it's Striker. I can't believe it. He is the chosen one. The chosen one? No, 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 Judge. You're not going to let a kid in here now, are you? I'll tell you what, Junior. Why don't you go sit out in the hall with the grown-ups do their meeting. When we're all done, we'll go feed you some ice cream or something. What are you, like, 10? No, I'm 13. What are you, 100? Little punk? Hey, I like this kid. He's got spunk. Listen, little turd. What you gotta do, Bandit? Six Sally Fields on me? Bandit, don't move. Sorry, Bandit. I'm sorry too, little man. I was out of line. You're all right by me. All right, well, if you two are finished, I got something to show y'all. You didn't. Oh, bet your ass, McClure. Got me here. Advanced copy of Cannonball Run 1 and 2. This bad boy's got five hours of... Burt Reynolds sucks. What'd he say? Sorry. Calm down, bandit. Let's not take away from the moment. Go ahead, Judge. This is a great day. Let's toast to Burt Reynolds. A true American hero. Here. 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 Man, I hate Tom Selleck. You mean Burt Reynolds? How the hell would you know? Does your blind ass watch a lot of films? I think Sam was right. I think that's Burt Reynolds. Whatever, man. Shut up and deal. Oh, here it comes. Who's, who's, who's the big blind here? Yeah. Your shit is tired, bro. You ain't funny. And you ain't a gangster, Jenny James. Leave Alex alone. I'm sorry, Al. It's just that my ride's got me bugging. You, you, you what? My ride, my wheels, my chair, you Taz. This thing's got me stressed, yo. I've got a ring that's bent, padding that's worn out. I've got to scrape me some cheddar together before me numb ass falls off. I've had six. I fall. I'm all in. I call this shiznit. I call it. I have a three pair. Man, I can't beat a three pair. How are you going to call with, with cards like this? You need to learn how to play poke poker. If you're going to start winning money. How much is one of them chairs anyway? I've got about 180, but they cost up near too large for the nice pimped out ones. Damn! You're going to have to learn to play better poker. For sure. Hey, Sam, you should pay James to be your seeing eye man. You could push him around all day and he could tell you where to go. Man, I'll tell you where to go. That's a good idea, but I got an Australian Shepherd on reserve with a leader dog for the blind. Damn immigrants taking our jobs. There has to be some way for me to make some easy cash. Man, I'm done with cars for the night. Let's play some doubles. Billy looks like another good score. It's been two jobs for how long now? Uh, seems like forever, but uh, about two years. I'm gonna keep it up if I want to buy this place from you, though. And you know I want to sell it to you, but I gotta sell it to the first person who comes along with the money. You know the old lady. She wants me to be moving to Arizona by the end of the summer. Anybody make any offers yet? Nothing concrete, but I have been approached by someone. Yeah, who was that? Douglas Brownell. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Dance Club Dougie? Yeah, that's the guy. 
Oh, come on, Charlie. You can't sell the bar to him. He's got to stay at our bar. It's not up to me. i got to sell. Hey, you must have enough money saved up by now for a down payment. Yeah, you think so, but uh, every time I turn around, I'm bailing Tommy out of something. So. You know, Tommy, uh, he's a good kid. You know, someday I do feel he's going to pay you back for all you've done for him. Well, I hope so. I mean, at this point, I take more money. What do you mean? Karen left me. Over Tommy? Man. What are you going to do? Hey, Charlie, can you turn this up real quick? Yeah, sure. Hi everyone, it's me, Richard Hardman, proud owner of Dick's Downtime in Detroit. And it's that time of year again. Time for the 13th annual Triple D's Cricket Open. Teams of two from all over the state will meet Saturday the 6th for the chance to win $10,000 cash. That's right, I said $10,000 cash in the trip before to Sin City. So practice up and turn in your $500 entry fee and your team roster to Triple D's at the corner of Woodward and Labian in downtown Detroit. Did he just say the winners get four tickets to Vegas? Yeah, why? Little Bert knows. Why? What's so big about Vegas? In Las Vegas, this August, they're holding the first ever Burt Reynolds Fan Club Conference. BRFC members from all over the world are going to be there. Huh. And, and check this out. Burt Reynolds, yes, Burt Reynolds himself, is going to be there signing autographs and, and performing selected scenes from his movies. <laughs> nice. Huge. It is huge. Did they just say to... to $10,000. You know what we could do with $10,000? Yeah, we, we could buy a new TV. TV. With speakers and picture in picture? Hell yeah, dog. I could get me a new ride. There's only one problem. Why? James is the only one of us that can throw with the damn. I can throw. <laughs> Shut up! I'm serious! It's not like baseball or tennis. Darts is like bowling or shooting free throws or maybe maybe golf. What you talking about, Sammy? Darts is a simple game of mathematics. You point me towards the board, tell me how far it is, and I get the technique down. Maybe gravity plays a part, but you st I'm money. Send me from the board and give me a dart. What? Give me a dart. Now, where's the board? Thank you. Pretty good, huh? Huh! Are you guys going to be in that this year? We're the defending champs. <laughs> of course we're playing. <laughs> yeah. Better question is who we're going to take to Vegas when we win! <laughs> who are we going to take? Hey. What you think, man? Uh, should we enter? Hell yeah, we should enter. It's darts and it's in a bar. That's our whole lives, man. And you're forgetting the best part. What's that? The prize. It's a trip to Vegas. None of us gamble. Why would we care about a trip to Vegas? Drinks are free in Vegas. Oh, oh, hell yeah! yeah Quick! <laughs> Top five hottest chicks in a movie set in Vegas. Great topic. Elizabeth Shue and leaving Las Vegas. Ooh, how about Sharon Stone? Well? Well what? Well, there's your chance to make a quick ten grand. Combine that with what you've already saved up. You'd have enough to buy my place. I don't throw competitive anymore, Charlie. You know that. You know, I respect your privacy, but everybody knows you're one of the best around here. How come you stop playing? Charlie, I really don't want to talk about that. You know Tommy's going to want to play. Any word from Karen? No, and you know what? I think she might actually really be gone this time. Sorry, man. You want a sandwich? Huh? No, thanks. I had earlier. Yeah, I've been meaning to ask you about that. You know, every day when I get up, you're gone, and then when I get to crickets at night, you're already there. What do you do during the day? Does she even have a job? Well, you gotta go there, man. I got some things in the works. Things in the works. 
You need to get a job and pay your bills. Can't keep covering you. I know, I know. Hey, did you hear about that tournament at Triple D's coming up? I also heard about the $500 entry fee. How are you going to pay for that? You don't even have a car anymore. Yeah, but if I win, I could use my half the prize money for a new one. Yeah, and if you lose, you're out another 500 bucks. I'm telling you, I can win it, man. I'm good enough. And I think me and Guts are going to enter. Unless you'd be willing to be my partner. Don't throw in competition anymore. Yeah, but I still don't understand why. I mean, you could use the money, and you know you're the Listen, best. Tommy, if you're down there, I don't want you doing any extra betting that could get you in trouble, all right? I know. I learned my lesson. Well, I hope you did. Hey, listen. I'm going up to crickets and practice with guts. You want to go? No, let me finish my sandwich. Probably take my mind off the Karen anyways. No worries, little man. Handicapped people should be at a bar on a Friday night. Holy crap! Look how close we are! I wish I was handicapped. They got it so easy! You're retarded. You guys want to get a game going? That Mr. Baseball dickhead from the rec center. Damn, that's right. And look, there's more of them. Bottoms up, ladies. Hey, striker. Look who's here. No way, man. Yeah, you remember what he said about the bird? What a bunch of losers. I mean, look at them. Look at their mustaches. They look ridiculous. Excuse me. You know who I am? No, and I don't care. I'm really, really famous. I said I don't know you. Leave me alone. Ever watch Magnum P.I.? What the hell is that? Some sick pickup line or something? Whatever. So how about you? You know who I am? No. What's up with that? Not fair, not fair. That's my spot. Let's just go and park somewhere else. Okay. Peep's always bumping up our spot. What are you gonna do about it, James? I decided you. Surprise, surprise. He ain't gonna do nothing. All talk, no action. Let's go inside, guys. It's a good idea, Eugene. You tell somebody about it inside. You guys go inside and have us a table. Get some business to tell you. Okay.
you go like, Brian, just Brian, what can I do for you? I want to talk to you about these guys over here in the cowboy hats. You mean the Burt Reynolds fan club? What about them? Yeah, they're uh, harassing your waitresses, being pretty rude. You know, a lot of nasty comments, especially that one over there. It's not what you expect from grown men. You know, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Really? Well, thanks for the tip. I'll certainly look into it. Thanks. Hey, guys. I hear you and the Tom Selleck's over here got a friendly little rivalry going on. We're not friends with those assholes. What? Did they tell about the little joke we played on at the thing? None of that matters. Just know this. We got a strict policy here. And anybody that starts to fight crickets is banned for life. We're not going to start anything, Charlie. We're just having a little fun with them, that's all. Okay. Hey, I've heard some complaints about people parking in the handicap spots. So if any of you guys are out there, you better move your car. That song, bitch. You and me outside right now. Sounds like some crazy shit. What's going on? I have no idea. Hey, boots empty. Play it again, Sonny? Very funny. You might want to get some more quarters ready. I'm shooting lights out tonight. That's it. I'm tired of the four men and a little lady routine. You better step up and do something by you to be a pussy and not go along. Kick his ass, man. Yeah! yeah. 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 Take yeah. it up! Yeah. 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 Give him the P.I. Magnum. Oh. You got nothing. Bandit. 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 What the hell was that? I have no idea. Hey Charlie, you might want to take a peek in the parking lot. Hey Gus? What's up Gus, where we at? We're over there by the dartboards. I got a shit. Alright. Hope everything comes out okay. Everybody's talking about the world outside. Rich man drinking while another man dies. Poor man living by the sole of his seat. I'm tired of hearing about the way it's gonna be. Yeah. Hey, what would it be, fellas? I love a butt, thanks. A uh, bottle draft or me and your lap, Billy? Come on, Darlene, you know I'm married. Take the bottle, thanks. Hey, I gotta try. How about you, Tommy? Me and Gus has put a picture of blue light. Okay, thanks, guys. Be right back. Hey, what's Kevin Smith doing here? Oh, I don't know. I heard he's making his next movie about darts, though. I can't believe there's enough to darts to make a damn movie about it. Who would watch that? I don't tell me about it. They've made movies about every other sport. I just saw some piece of crap about dodgeball. Why not darts? And he's probably looking for, you know, some place for Jay and Silent Bob to stand around and swear about shit. Didn't I hear somewhere he wasn't ever going to put those two in another movie? Did you see Jersey Girl? Tom, isn't that Best Stevens from high school? I think so. I remember Guts had such a crush on her. Here she comes. Oh my god! I haven't seen you guys in years! What have you been up to? Well, well, after high school, a friend of mine made an independent movie, Dexter Murphy's Expiration Game. Ever heard of it? No? Anyways, he asked me to be in it, so I said, sure, why the hell not? Then a couple of executives saw it and asked me to do some commercials. 
Next thing I know, I'm living in L.A., and I got into doing porn. After about 30 movies, I realized the money was better stripping at private parties, you know, bachelorette parties and such. I realized I can make a good living doing that around here, so I moved back. Are you serious? No. Because <laughs> you had me going there for a minute. What are you really doing? Actually, me and Guts are about to get into this dart tournament in Detroit. You should come watch. Who's Guts? Dan King. Remember him? You mean Sweet Cheek? What? Dan King had the hottest ass of any guy in our high school. The girls used to call him Sweet Cheeks. Okay, well, Sweet Cheeks is around here somewhere. Is he still that hot ass? Just a little pain. Better be no big deal. We need you for the tournament. Yeah. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Come on, guys. Let's get out of here. I wouldn't mind getting a quick grab. 
You wouldn't mind, would you? I don't think now's a good time. Oh, come on, sweet cheeks. It's not like she said she wanted to have your babies. Just let the girl grab your ass and let's go throw. I can't. There's something you guys don't know about. Are you married? Um, uh, girlfriend? Oh, nothing like that. Well, sweet cheeks, are you gay? I told you that Clay Aiken poster was for my niece. Then shit, man. Just let the girl have a grab and let's go. We don't want to lose control of the board. Relax, Alex Trebek. Listen, I just can't right now. Any other time, I let you touch as much as you wanted to. Trust me. Right now, I just can't. Okay. Just joking. It's not a big deal or anything. Really let Charlie know I need to talk to him right away. Be bet. I'm gonna do better than just give you a quick feel. Here comes Sweet Cheeks. Charlie, that's a mess there, man. Yeah, Burt Reynolds, Tom Selleck brawl, guts with a shit and run accident. <laughs> All the typical night for a bar owner. You sure you want to buy this place? I don't think so now. Hey, boy. Tommy! <laughs> Car sure is riding great. Yeah, real great. Son of a bitch. Slow down there, Tommy. If you and Guts are going to stand a chance, you can't let them get to you. But Guts! <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just give me the 500 and then, you know what? Go home to mama! Go home to mama! <laughs> and get your haircut, buddy! <laughs> I really like So go. That. Tell you what, I'm going to buy the company that does that hair shit so you can't use it anymore! Close it down! <laughs> double. That was a double. That's like two points for us. You guys are such assholes! True, but they sure can shoot a mean game of darts. <laughs> He's right, Tommy. If you guys are going to stand a chance, you're going to have to practice up. Oh, like fish in a barrel. New look. Oh, ding. <laughs> so on fire. <laughs> Woo! Being rich is sweet. Yeah, super sweet. Hello everyone, I'm Richard Hartman, proud owner of Dick's Downtime in Detroit, and I'm coming to you live to let you know that the stakes for the 13th annual Triple D's Cricket Open have been raised. With Hockey Lockdown, our 13th annual Cricket Open is beginning to draw national attention. So, I have decided to raise the stakes from $10,000 to $20,000. So bring your skills and enjoy the thrills of the 13th Annual Triple D's Cricket Open at the corner of Woodward and Labian in downtown Detroit. Damn, 20 grand for a third tournament. I'd buy do it, wouldn't it, Billy? Do what? You know what? There's got to be another way for me to make enough money. I'm not entering the tournament, Charlie. 
besides, I haven't competed in anything since the accident. What accident? You remember when I was in the juniors, right, in 89? Yeah. That's where the nickname Bullseye came from. Then you stopped throwing darts right after that. Why? Well, one night a couple of weeks later, Tommy and I are out in our backyard throwing lawn darts. Just one more Bullseye and I win. Listen, listen! They can't keep me out. Sorry, little dude. Them are the rules. I could be all those jerks. It's just not fair. And with Ben's wrist being broken, we might as well not even hire it at all. Well, now don't talk like that, little guy. Striker's over there, and he's, uh, well, he's getting good. And, uh, I called the Grand Rapids BRFC, and they're bringing over a substitute. So he's supposed to be a real ringer. Oh, yeah, what's his name? He goes by the name of. Black Bert. What the hell are you doing here? This is a private meeting. Yeah, I know. I came all the way out here from Grand Rapids because I heard you guys were in trouble. Well then, welcome. Come on in. Welcome, buddy. I can't oh. welcome our guest. Hell no, I ain't welcoming that guest. He ain't one of us. What's your problem? What's my problem? Are you serious? What's my problem? It's plain as day. This guy doesn't belong here. He ain't one of us. You got a problem with me? Yeah, I got a problem with you. But these morons all can't seem to see. What's plain as day is that you are... Say it. I dare you. Okay, missing this. Welcome, Black Bert. Good to see you again. <laughs> Bandit! <laughs> it has been too long. It has. Too long. <laughs> it has been too long, my friend. Hey, only a few days left until the tournament. Think you and Guts have a chance? I don't know, Charlie. I hate to bag on him. He's my friend and all, but I'm not sure if I can win with Guts. Oh, he's a pretty good player. He is usually when he's focused. Lately, he's been so into Beth, though. He's not ready for this. I wish I could get my brother to play. We'd win for sure. Probably right. But I can understand why he doesn't want to play anymore. What do you mean? Well, he told me about him accidentally killing your dad, no? Maybe I don't want to bring up any bad memories. No, no, it's not that. It's just, uh, what do you mean by him killing our dad? Well, he said you guys were out playing lawn darts and he threw one up in the air and it came down and hit your dad in the head. Is that what he told you? That's not how it happened. What do you mean? Well, I remember we were throwing darts and Dad was grilling up some steaks. I remember we were throwing end to end. Billy needed one more ringer to beat me. He had three shots to do it with. On his second one, he landed at dead center. He started celebrating. Yes! He spun around and he launched the other one way up in the air. I came down and hit your dad in the head. He told me all that. The dart didn't kill my dad. It landed two feet away from him. Well, what about the blood on the dart? Your dad hunched all over the grill? Charlie, my dad died of a heart attack. The doctors and the coroner said he died before his head injuries. Well, what about the blood on the lawn dart? <laughs> the blood? It was ketchup. Oh my gosh. All these years Billy's been living with this thinking he killed our dad? No wonder he's always. His whole life he's been... This is unbelievable. That's why you don't play competitive darts anymore. Hey, Charlie, I got an idea. If I could get my brother to play in that tournament, would you do something for me? Charlie, what are you doing here? Hey, a mushroom walked into my no, car. No, wait. Yet. 
Let me give it a shot for once. Okay. Uh, so a bartender comes to my door. And what'd you say? No, no, I don't have shit. <laughs> but how about this? How's the beer sound? Hey, it sounds real good. Come on in. Okay. Guess I'm going to have to work on my jokes if I'm going to buy crickets from you, huh, Charlie? Hey, that's kind of what I came here for. What do you mean? Well, he's made an offer. Who? Oh. Douglas Brownlee. Dance Club Dougie? How much? Uh, it's too much to turn down. So well, that's it. The last great dark bar in the area is going to be turned into a teeny bopper disco joint, huh? Not necessarily. What do you mean? Well, I didn't accept the offer. Why not? Well, you know, you and Tommy are just like family to me. I want to sell this bar to you. So what I said to Dougie was, is I want to take one week and think about this, and if I don't get any other offers, then the place is his. So, so, I have a week to come up with the money. That's right. $20,000 in the trip before to Las Vegas is drawing attention from the best dart throwers in the country. All you boys and girls, this is your chance to throw against dart legends Dax Hamilton and Michael Arkin. All you have to have is $500 and good aim, and you can be $20,000 richer. Only two days before the tournament, we will see you at Triple D's. Great, just what we need to throw against the best in the world. With our luck, we'll probably draw those guys first round. Yeah, if we're lucky, that's right, they'll be covered for us. Well, let's get back to work. Okay. What the hell was that? I told you I was getting good, man. With that attitude, we're not going to stand a chance. Listen to me. 15 is practicing. Tommy, why don't you go inside and check things out? I need a minute to, you know, prepare my head. Hey, cops! What do you want, Jefferson? I hear you're a betting man. You care to place a little wager on this? You name it, I win it. All right. All right, I win. You're a putz, you know that? Listen, if my brother and I win, you give him his bet back. Right, so what do I get? What do you want? Well, you ain't worth shit. Don't got any money. What? what do you say when we win? You never step foot in crickets again. Don't touch my truck. Oh, I'll touch it. 
Get off my truck. Oh, baby. Get off my truck. You got a bet. Wait, Tommy's not here to pick you up. You think I need Tommy to back me up? But I don't fight alone. Get out of here, you schmuck. Yeah. Crickets, baby! Crickets! Hello, everybody. I'm Chip McGee, coming to you live from Detroit, Michigan, where we're about to kick off the 13th annual Triple D's Cricket Open. Joining me tonight during our simulcast for TV and radio is T.J. McClanahan. T.J. Thanks, Chip. You know, Detroit has been known for quite a while as Hockey Town due to the success of the Red Wings. But with no hockey season last year, the advertisers are looking for other avenues to get their messages out. And as the $20,000 first prize shows, they've chosen this tournament. That they have, T.J. You'll notice the money has drawn some of the biggest names in darts. This tournament, though, is a little different than what the pros are used to. First of all, it's a partner tournament. The rules are different. There's a lot more pressure. What's up, man? Got this one of these clothes. This is ridiculous. I'm sorry, man. I was in the best little whorehouse in Detroit, and the black Ronnie Anderson sold all my clothes. Man, ain't that something? That's tough. Tell you what, let's get you fit into these jeans, and we'll hook up with the rest of the guys out there. So who do we got first round? Great, Hamilton and Arkin, the number four and seven ranked throwers in the world. That is great. They're perfect for us. How do you figure? These guys are the favorites by a long shot. They should be the professionals. So how's playing them first round good for us? So we get a crack at them before they get you started. Our game. Yeah, cricket. These guys play 5 one almost exclusively. They're going to be awesome at, you know, high numbers, 20s, bullseyes, but they almost never practice the other numbers. Walter, good players, please report to board. First round matchup. The name of the game is cricket, and for those viewers who are new to darts, TJ, why don't you take us through the rules? I'd love to, Chip. In cricket, only the numbers 15 through 20 and the bullseyes will be the targets. Every time a player hits one of those targets, a light will appear next to that number. When one team has three lights next to a number lit, that number is called open. This means that any time they hit that number again, they will score the corresponding number of points. This continues until the other team also has all three of their lights next to that number lit. Once both teams have all three, that number is called closed and is no longer a target. The game continues until one team has all their lights lit up and is in the lead. Now remember, each space on the dartboard is broken up into sections. If a dart hits the outer ring, the player, or in this case team, receives double points or two lights. If a dart hits the inner ring, the team will receive triple points or three lights. And what about the bullseye, TJ? I'm glad you asked. In the game of cricket, the outer ring of the bullseye is worth 25 points or one light, while the inside area, or the dead center of the dartboard, is called a double bullseye and is worth 50 points or two lights. Well, I think that should about do it for the intro. It's time to turn things over to the owner of this establishment, Richard Hartman, and get this thing officially kicked off. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Richard Hartman, proud owner of Fix Downtown in Detroit, and I'd like to welcome you all to the 13th Annual Triple D's Cricket Open. As I look around, I'm thrilled to see all the wonderful dark athletes who have cost their five hundred dollars for the chance to win twenty thousand big ones in the trip before to Las Vegas. Without further ado, let's throw some darts. That was some intro from the owner of Triple D's. You got that right. Good old Dick Hardman seems like a real straight shooter to me. Well, all right, TJ, when you take a look at the draw, is there anything that catches your eye? Well, uh, over there on board number one, we've got what appears to be a, a group of Burt Reynolds imitators. Hey, interesting fact, TJ. Did you know that Burt Reynolds is the favorite actor of Packer quarterback Brett Favre? I did not know that. Well, what else do you like on the draw? Well, we've got the defending champions, Mitchell Cobbs and Blaine Lewis, throwing against two members of a local motorcycle gang, Murphy's Marauders. Yeah, and that battle promises to be interesting because Murphy's Marauders obviously spend a lot of time in bars, so they should be ready to throw. No, actually it should be a blowout as Cobbs and Lewis are top-notch throwers. What should make it interesting is that Mitchell and Blaine are prone to their flamboyant celebrations after good throws, and the Marauders are not going to put up with any of that. Well, there may be a few good matchups throughout this tournament, TJ, but let's be honest, none of these local bar hounds stands a chance against the duo of Dax Hamilton and Michael Art. I couldn't agree more, Chipper. The number four and seven players in the world should undoubtedly take home the $20,000 first prize without much challenge. Their first round sacrificial lambs are a couple of brothers, Tommy and Billy Jefferson. 
well, they won't get their $500 entry fee back, but at least the Jefferson brothers will get some nice stories to tell their friends. Let's go over to board three for the start of that match. All right, Tommy, like I said, these guys are awesome at 5 one okay? They're going to be really good at full size and 20s, all right? Don't worry about those. I'm going to try and close those out. I need you to go to 15s and 16s, okay? So don't worry about what I'm doing. 15s Billy, and 16s, that's how Billy, it is. Billy, relax, man. What? We don't need to do that. Do what? The 15 thing. We can beat him straight up. Tommy, I, mean, I haven't competed in anything since... Since Dad died, I know, but listen. I know you blame yourself for Dad's death, and I know you thought it happened because you were so competitive. You did, Tommy. Okay, if I didn't care so much about winning, I never would have thrown that dart up in the air. Dad loved the way you competed the way you did. Mom said he was just like that. He'd want you to compete now. All right, you guys ready to get this over with? Yeah, I guess. You ready? Let's drain some triples and send these guys packing. One dart apiece, closest to the bullseye, goes first. You want to go first? They don't call you bullseye for nothing. I want you to use this. With the bullseye, the local team of Jefferson and Jefferson announce their presence and will get to throw first against the favorites, Dax Hamilton and Michael Arkin. They may throw first, but it's going to take more than one lucky dart to beat this dream team. Triple 20, triple 19, triple 18 with his first three darts. Are you kidding me? In the game of cricket, that is a perfect beginning. It's not unheard of for professionals to throw like that, but these guys are supposed to be a warm-up game for Hamilton and Arkin. Mm. Let's see how Dax Hamilton responds to this immediate pressure. Yeah, and Hamilton isn't happy with the results of this first throw. He's managed to close 20s and he hit two 19s, but that still leaves the door open for Tommy Jefferson to score on his choice of 19s and 18s. And believe me, Chip, Mr. Thomas Jefferson had better take advantage of this and rack up as many points as possible. Yeah, well, he's not going after points at all. He is playing to close the board. The first four darts have been perfect. Make that five. No, six perfect darts in a row. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, in the first round of what we thought would be a blowout the other way, we are witnessing what may very well be the most amazing game of cricket ever thrown. And it's being done by two unknown amateurs. Well, hold the biscuits, baby. This has just been brought to my attention. These two amateurs may be unknown on the professional dart circuit, but they are certainly well known around here. What do you mean, TJ? I mean, Billy Jefferson is actually Billy Bullseye Jefferson. Hey, get out of here, kid. Billy Bullseye Jefferson? Be you know it, Chip. I don't know why I didn't recognize the name before. But for those viewers who don't know what I'm talking about, the name Billy Bullseye Jefferson rings through the annals of dart lore like Santa Claus rings through Christmas. What my colleague is trying to say is that Billy Bullseye Jefferson, almost 15 years ago, became the youngest thrower ever to record a perfect game in competition. And he did it three times in the same tournament. That's right, Chip. Then he disappeared from the world of darts without any explanation as to why. The big question now is what can Dax Hamilton and Michael Arkin do to derail the Jefferson Express? You really think you should be drinking during this? You know how you get. Ah, oh, kiss my ass. It's a bar tournament. And you know what they say. Since they can't possibly score on any of the numbers, it appears as if Arkin and Hamilton are going to try to score as many points as possible on bullseyes to see if they can stay in the game. And Michael Arkin just misses with his third dart of the round. Speaking of rounds, Chipperoo, where's our waitress? Folks out there on TV and radio land, I try to stop TJ from drinking more, but one thing I've learned over the years is you don't stand in between a rhinoceros and a swimming pool. That doesn't even make sense. No, but then neither does having a person do sign language for a radio broadcast, but that didn't stop the network from paying her, did it? Yeah. Let's get back to the match.
Holy crap, TJ, they did it. That is a perfect game with full closure and eight yards. And for those of you who are wondering, a team can also win by closing everything and being tied with their opponents. In this case, the score will read zero to zero, but the Jefferson brothers will advance to the second round with a remarkable upset over the highly favored professional team of Arkin and Hamilton. That's right, Chip. The Vegas odds makers just took a bath on that one. And you gotta think the odds boards are gonna change now, and Billy and Tommy Jefferson are gonna be the new favorites. Champ, you haven't lost a thing. I know we got a long way to go. Still got two months left. Remember when we were little? We used to compete against each other at everything. Yeah. Remember what Dad used to tell us? I can still hear him like it was yesterday. Boys, I want you to go out there and compete as hard as you can to win. If you don't win, it's not the end of the world. But if you don't compete, you don't compete it is. You know, I never really understood what the hell the old man was talking about. But just recently, I think I figured it out. Yeah, what'd you come up with? I think Dad was trying to tell us that we didn't always have to be the best. But we sure as hell better be our best in whatever we did. Tommy, I'm not sure that being our best is going to be good enough this time. Dad would be proud of us, bro, no matter what happens. Yeah. See you inside. Clowns of Holmes. Big one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Touching stuff. Mm, yeah, I think I'm gonna cry. Why would you two have to pay off to get a blind kid and a cripple for the sun off? You didn't come here to fight. You didn't come here to fight. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Gosh, you, repeat every, you repeat everything you said? No. You? <laughs> <laughs> Do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, we look, man. We just came to say it's seriously. Good to see you thrown again, you know? It is. Dark world misses you. We do miss you. Can't be serious. So welcome, welcome back. Welcome back. A little peace? Peace and love. You know what I mean? A little friendly advice? Yeah. I wouldn't worry about us beating those two dark tars. <laughs> <laughs> I would spend some time putting some ice on your hand. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, give me some! How does that feel there, champ? Yeah. See the finals. See the finals. So did you uh, ever get that genital itch under control? 
he, he swore to me those were friends of yours. They were. They were dirty hookers. Dirty hookers need friends, too. <clears throat> Welcome back, everybody. In case you're just joining us, I'm Chip McGee, alongside my very happy colleague, Mr. T.J. McClanahan. That's right, I am happy tonight. And why? Because we came here to Detroit expecting to see a couple of pros walk over the top of these amateurs and take home the $20,000 first prize without a challenge. And instead, those so-called pros found themselves a quick first-round exit, and we're down to the semifinals. I think it's just about time we turn things over to our gracious host, who has agreed to pick up our bar tab for this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the semifinals of the 13th annual Triple D's Cricket Open. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce the four two-player teams that will compete for the grand prize of $20,000 in the trip before the Las Vegas. And one semifinal on board one, we have our defending champions, Mitchell Cobbs and Blaine Lewis. And they'll be taking on newcomers Jimmy Boom Boom Barnett and Sam Jackson. That's right. That's right. And in the other semifinal on board four, we have William and Thomas Jefferson. Yeah! And they'll be taking on. Is that right? Uh, DL Stryker and Black Turk. Where is he? I don't know. I thought he was with you. I was just talking to him outside the parking lot just a minute ago. Here, I'll go find him. Hurry up. If he isn't here before his turn, we got a fourth. You know. right you. Right Trunks and books up. You can care of each chance, no legs, and a steezy wonder. Hey, call down, I have it on control. Go, go, here. Oh, 
He's right, Billy. Listen, man, we didn't want to win this way, but you can't throw darts with a broken hand. Yeah, how would you know, Chief? Right here. Lucky for us, this happened before the tournament, so we could get Black Bird here as a substitute. But you can't do that right now. I'm afraid he's right. No substitutions are to be made once the tournament has started. Well, this certainly is an unfortunate turn of events for the Jefferson brothers. You got that right, Chip. Let's turn it over to Dick Hardman for the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, due to unfortunate circumstances, it looks as though the team of Jefferson and Jefferson will have to withdraw. What? No, 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 wait, 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 wait. I'll throw. You can't possibly throw it. And you wouldn't be listening to us on the radio, am I right? <laughs> the dedication, the determination, the incredible rack on that waitress. We were talking about Billy Bullseye Jefferson attempting to throw in the semifinal match with his left hand. Oh yeah, now, well I guess the strategy would be to have Tommy throw first. Indeed he will. And he has hit a bullseye for the go first dart, meaning that Thomas, is that right? His name is Thomas George Jefferson? Go get him, Wheezy. Well, let's just call him Tommy. Tommy Jefferson will throw first in the semifinal match, a throw that all of a sudden has a lot more intrigue. I'm afraid what might happen to you. You're real too deep because of you. Listen, Striker, we're up by 10. All you need is one bullseye to close and win. Come on, you can do it. You do it! For little Bert! Because of that, I'm not what I should be. Somebody get these two hussies out of here. Come out of here. Disgusting. All right, Striker. Come on now. Think of something that can't possibly turn you on. Calm down. Things that can't possibly turn you on. What can't turn you on? Baseball. Meatloaf. Turtle. Shaving cream. Build your folly fast. Your clouds of white will you hit the ground before you see the light. All right, Billy. All we need is one red bull side and we're in the finals. I feel like I brought this on. What do you do? Son, just do the best you can. I'm proud of you. I look back In all my years of broadcasting, I have never seen anything like what I just saw. Would you agree, TJ? I would, Chip. Ha! 
You hear that? <laughs> Wood chip. <laughs> yeah, way to go, you bastard. Drunk, he made it funny. But I was talking about that gutty display by Billy Bulls by Jefferson. He refuses to give up. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's the finals of the 13th annual Triple D's Cricket Open. <laughs> Good luck. Pretty funny, Cobb. You should come up with that one on your own. No, I helped. <laughs> you know, we don't need the money. Twenty grand is chump change. But you know, I'm gonna love kicking the piss out of you in front of all these people. Yeah, I heard this before. Oh, yeah? I'll put that myth to bed. Billy Bullseye Jefferson. He is Bullseye. He is so Bullseye. <laughs> You've done shit since you were a kid and you know it. Yeah. Give her that shirt. Well, well, well. It looks like our finalists know each other and they don't like each other much. Very observant of you, Chip. There's about as much love here as in a Kobe and Shaq sandwich. Ladies and gentlemen, I will apologize for my partner. He has apparently lost his mind. That may be so, but we're ready for the main event now. Would you look at that? Mitchell Cobbs flaunting the Corvette darts in Tommy Jefferson's face. And what my partner is talking about is that two weeks earlier, Tommy Jefferson lost his Corvette to Mitchell Cobbs in a high-stakes dart match. Mm. We'll concede that you go first. Yeah, that's the first smart thing you said all day. <laughs> <laughs> It all comes down to this, TJ. The score is 112 to 100 in favor of Jefferson and Jefferson. They have two bullseyes lit up. Cobbs and Lewis have all lights lit. It comes down to this. Whoever hits the next bullseye will win the match and the $20,000. Wow. That's excellent commentary, TJ. I'm sure all the people in Radio Land have a much clearer picture of the situation now. Tommy Jefferson has one dart left. And the way Mitchell Cops has been throwing, I don't think the Jefferson brothers will get another chance if Tommy misses here. Tommy, you have to do this. Okay? You can do it. Just calm down, relax. Let the dart do the work. And remember, no matter what happens, I love you. Alright? Billy, I know I can do this. I've been waiting to do this for as long as I can remember. Trust you, make it happen. Boy choked. He missed the most important throw of his life. <laughs> oh, hey, Tommy. Nothing. You suck your future. <laughs> Step aside. <laughs> you can't help but feel for Thomas Jefferson. 
I haven't seen a choke like that since Bobby Knight left in the air. Going somewhere? Yeah, I'm going to look for my wife. Listen, man, about the No, you listen, Tommy. You've been screwing up for far too long, man, and I'm always left to pick up the pieces. It's gotta stop. You know what, Tommy? I didn't want it to have to come to this, but I think you're gonna have to move out. I know. What do you mean I know? I know. Ever since we were little kids, you've always looked out for me. Just this once. I wanted to be the one to save the day. I wanted to be the responsible one. Yeah? Come on, Tom. I'm gonna go for my boy. Hey, man. Let me at least buy you one last beer first. I shouldn't even be going to get the I made a bet with Mitchell. I don't think that'll be a problem tonight. What are we still doing here? Same place, same space. No change. Wasting our time. I mean, what the hell's going on? Come on. Everything goes planned, Charlie? To perfection. What goes planned? Everything your brother predicted, except, of course, when those jerk-offs busting your hand. We knew that one surprise when he got up to 20,000. The Vegas would get involved, and once Vegas got involved, it was going to be a piece of paper. What's he talking about, man? Hey, don't listen to me. He planned the whole thing. Bullseye. It was a pleasure. Tommy called us up, told us what was going on, and we jumped on the first plane here. You guys know Tommy? What's going on around here? Of course, we know all the Valley reps. We've been working with these guys for how long, Tommy? Almost two years. What? Where the hell did you think I went every day? Yeah, Tommy let us know what was going on, all you've done for him over the years. You know, we were the first ones to be here to help out. He told us about Charlie and how he's going to have to sell this place and have it turn into a stupid dance club. And we know there's too many of them already. Right, so Tommy tells us all we got to do is show up, dump the game to you guys, and we'd be helping the dart industry. So you guys dumped? Well, we didn't really have to dump. The way you were throwing darts, hell, we didn't have to act at all. You're a hell of a dart player, Bullseye. And Tommy knew that you guys would be huge underdogs, so he had me put all of his money for you guys to win in the first round. What did we go out bet anyways, Charlie? Oh, I'll put 500 down at 30 to 1. You want $15,000? Yeah, but I didn't win it. He did. And then he had me take all of that money and put it on Blaine and Mitchell to win in the finals. Well, why bet on them? Why not let, let it ride on up? Two reasons. First of all, I knew after knocking off Dax and Mike, we'd be the favorites. No money in betting the favorite. And more importantly... I knew those two jackasses would do whatever it took to win, including cheating the cripple kids to get to the finals. So in the finals... So in the finals you don't. I didn't expect them to break your hand. But once they did, I didn't think I was going to have to dump anything. Then you come out and start tossing bombs lefty style. What was I supposed to do? So then, that last start when we needed a bullseye. Get on us losing. I was able to wait till right before the sunrise to place the bet. So I was able to get odds of 12 to 1. All 15,000? Oh, yeah. It's like. It's like $170,000. Yep. $180,000. But I figured Dax and Mike deserve something for their time. Hey, no charge. It's right the freebie. Anytime we can help out a good dark bar, we'll be there. Thanks, guys. I'm going to buy that crippled little gangster a new wheelchair, though. I felt bad for the kid. So anyways, after I took out a couple of bucks for some incidentals and beer and things, I used the rest to buy this place from Charlie. Wait a second, you bought crickets? Technically, yes. But I'll only be the owner until you get your ass over there and sign those papers. Officially making you the owner. Man. It's the least I can do after all you've done for me. Tommy, I'm... Man. Thank you. Our own 
right now. I thought you might be interested in a way to I hate to break this little love match yet, but I am leaving for Arizona tomorrow. So before I go, why don't you just let me hear one? All right, Charlie. The guy walks into the bar. He finds out he owns the place. I agree with the first two, yeah. but there's no way Slapshot is in it. It's way overrated. What are you talking about? Look, it's a good movie, but it's not a top five sports movie ever. You're on Ludes, man. Well, what's on your top five list? The old guy. Caddyshack. Kingpin. Hell, even Dodgeball. Oh, you're crazy. Hey, let's ask him. Drunk guy number two. What's, the, what's on your top five list? The best sports movies of all time. Uh, top five sports movies? Basketball. <laughs> Big Lebowski. Um, is Jerry Maguire a uh, sports movie? <laughs> Wait, basketball. Isn't that the movie from those two South Park oh, dudes? Yeah. You guys are crazy. <laughs> You're both obviously wasted. Better let me drive home. Hey, see you later, Tommy. We'll see you, Tommy. See you guys. Hey, guys, I got one for the road. Yeah? It's better golf movie. Caddy Shack or Hammond Gilmore? Great. Thanks, Bullseye. I'm not going to listen to Carl Spackler invitations all the way home. So I got this go At least I got this going for me, which is nice. <laughs> You know you've only owned this place for three months and you're already doing double the business Charlie did. Tell me we've owned this place for three months. And there just there's a big reason for the booming business design. How do you figure? Came up with mustache actor movie night. That's a brilliant idea. Those Selick and Reynolds wannabes drink a lot of beer. Yeah, maybe. But you're the one who lowered the pool table for the wheelchair guys. I can't believe you made up with Mitchell. You did give your vet back as an apology for my hand. As long as it's not causing any troubles, this gold card is more than welcome. Yeah, we know. All I'm saying is you've done a great job here. And I know it's got to be tough. Well, it's got to be tough. Be the second best dart thrower in your own bar. Still don't think Mitchell can be. I wasn't talking about Mitchell. Oh, I got you. I just come out of retirement for a game. Hello everybody, I'm Chip McGee. Do you have an irritating itch in a private area? If so, you know that it's uncomfortable not only to deal with, but uncomfortable to talk about. But worry no more, because McClanahan's Burn Be Gone Cream is now available at your local pharmacist and party store. And if you try us for the first time this weekend, your merchant will throw in a 40 ounce Pabst Ice. Have a killer weekend. McGee out. been a wimp in the 
boardroom. Have you been a wimp in the bedroom? Have you been a wimp in life? Drink Blackout Triple X, and you won't remember whether you were a wimp or not. Blackout Triple, triple X. X. <laughs> That's awesome.